The Jungle, written by Upton Sinclair. The Jungle, written by Upton Sinclair at the turn of the last century and published by Penguin Books, tells the gritty and often disturbing story of the United States Beef Trust and the problems that the vertical integration of any industry can cause. Told through the eyes of Lithuanian immigrant Jurgis Rudkis and his family, this book explores the promise of the American dream, the promise of hope for a better life without hindrance from class, race, or nationality, indeed lured many to American soils. The novel begins with the wedding of Rudkis to Ona. To begin here with such deeply rooted cultural tradition allows Sinclair to introduce the predominant themes of this novel, the embeddedness of culture, the importance of family, and the ways in which these relationships are irrevocably affected by class and unrestricted industrial monopolies. Speaking of the ancient Lithuanian Vesilius ceremony, whereby guests at the wedding are expected to dance with the new bride, bestowing monetary gifts for the new couple so as to begin their married life, the author describes the debt to tradition and its concurrent debt to this poor community. Bit by bit, these poor people had given up everything else, but to this they cling with all the power of their souls. They cannot give up the Vesilia. To do that would not merely be to be defeated, but to acknowledge defeat, and the difference between these two things is what keeps the world going. Thus, having known himself for the master of things, a man could go back to his toil and live upon the memory of all his days. As the narrative continues, the reader follows the Rudkiss family through all the many trials of survival that they face in a new country and culture of which they are naively ignorant. At first believing that all they have been told about this country of unlimited opportunity. Yordkiss thinks to himself, in that country, rich or poor, a man was free. He might do as he pleased and count himself as good as any other man. He could count his troubles at an end. As a result of this misconception, tragedy strikes. The vast difference between their expectations and the reality of their new lives are presented writ large in the description of their new home, and then later in the trials that they face and are forced to endure. Of Packingtown, the name given by Sinclair to the Stockyard District of Chicago, the author writes, There were rows of brick houses, between them a vista, half a dozen chimneys, tall as the tallest of buildings, and leaping from them half a dozen columns of smoke, thick, oily, and black as night. Compounded with the image of this grim world is the smell of it which pervades. An elemental odor, raw and crude, rancid, sensual, and strong, and the sounds that emanate from the lowing of the ten thousand cattle, the distant grunting of ten thousand swine. This description overwhelms the reader as much as this world overwhelms the characters within the story as we share in their few victories and abundant and paralyzing defeats. Described by Sinclair in the following passage, a theme that resonates through sheer repetition. They were beaten. They were beaten. They had lost the game, and they were swept aside. They had all dreamed of freedom, to be decent and clean, and now it was all gone. It never would be. They had played the game and had lost. This dire tale of the impersonal monopoly that dominates over the common man, the union that at first offers hope but does not come to offer support at the end, and the toll that these forces can take upon this family is at times deeply depressing, something that Sinclair himself fought over as he was writing The Jungle. And yet the novel ends on a positive note, which, although not alleviating the suffering that we have endured with Rudkiss, does nonetheless give voice to anyone who has at any point felt disenfranchised, mistreated, neglected, or abused. The final note of this book fills us with the voices of humanity calling for deliverance.
of the everlasting soul of man arising from the dust, rending the bands of oppression and ignorance, groping his way toward the light. This book, which many critics consider to be Upton Sinclair's masterpiece, does indeed give voice to a great many of American mass immigrants who came to this country to enjoy all the promises offered by the American dream. According to Ronald Gottesman, who wrote the introduction to the Penguin Classic 1985 edition, The Jungle remains the most important proletarian novel ever published in the United States. Its agonized cry for justice has reverberated over the years. Although not an immigrant himself, coming from a well-established, good Southern American family whose lineage dates back to the Civil War period, Sinclair was nonetheless brought into the face of poverty. This was as a result of his father, who was rumored to be negligent, abusive, and alcoholic. Starved of financial, emotional, intellectual support from not only his father, but equally his mother, a socially pretentious and pious Puritan, Sinclair turned to books. Although he did not receive any formal education until the age of 10, this precocious author was able to enter City College, New York by the age of 14, and then go on to Columbia University to study philosophy, history, literature, and music. Probably as a result of this liberal education, Sinclair soon aligned himself with the socialist philosophy. Indeed, unlike many of his peers, Sinclair felt that the artist had failed society and not vice versa. Like the well-known philanthropist Andrew Carnegie, an immigrant who undoubtedly benefited from all the promises offered by the American dream, the young writer dreamed that some day he might establish a library which would house not only his writings, but the works of all celebrated authors, for the purpose of increasing helpful reading among the humble people of the land. His interest in the common man was heightened by reports in the press regarding the unbelievably inhumane conditions facing workers in the meatpacking industry of Chicago, Illinois. Articles written by the contemporaneous muckraking press included the ironically entitled The Greatest Trust in the World, which detailed the monopolistic tendencies and exploitative practices of the meat trust, the filthy conditions of the plants and the workers' housing, the below living wage salaries and overall barbarism of the industry drove Sinclair to leave for Chicago to see it for himself. He arrived on Wednesday, November 2nd, 1904, and stayed for seven weeks, gathering information for what would become the jungle. This novel first appeared serially within the socialist journal The Appeal before being published as the novel we today are familiar with. Promised to be the most powerful story ever written and a work that would stir the country, in The Appeal, Sinclair suggested of the jungle, it will set forth the breaking of human hearts by a system which exploits the labor of men and women for profit. It will shake the popular heart and blow the top off the industrial tea kettle. Its themes will be everyday ones of bread and butter. It will have incidents and adventures, a life and death struggle, and a heartbreaking tragedy, the tragedy of life. Why not dive into the jungle yourself so that you can be the judge? As suggested above, it is not a journey for the faint of heart. But then again, what worthwhile journey ever is?